Hello and welcome. This build is going to show you how to do super high damage with the Glacius and Incendio spells. To do this high damage, you're going to need the correct gear, potions and talents, which I'm going to show you how to get. And to keep this build simple, we're just going to use one spell page and one quick infantry slot so we don't have to change things during combat and we can do a sort of brute force approach. We are not going to be using dark magic as not only is it extremely unethical but you also can't get it until the extreme late game whereas in this build everything can be acquired at level 16. So like a good Hogwarts student we're going to kill our goblins with legal spells. So let's uh, disapparate into this build and look at the spells we'll be using. The main three will be Accio, Glacius and Incendio. And for the fourth spell, you're actually going to want to use a ranged red spell. So you actually have some choice here. So that's Confringo, Bombardo, Defendo or Expelliarmus. I personally go with Defendo as it has the highest single target damage. For each of the spells, you're going to need the mastery talent for them. And once you've got all the mastery talents, the combo will look like this. Use Accio to pull in multiple enemies, then use Glacius to freeze one enemy and finish them all off with Incendio. The target with Glacius cast on them will take double damage from Incendio and after this target is defrosted they will trigger burst damage to all the nearby enemies from the Glacius mastery talent alongside the initial Incendio damage so you're able to do loads of AoE damage with this combination. This set of spells is also rather versatile so say if there's an enemy who you can't cast Accio on you can instead from range cast Glacius and then use the ranged damage spell you chose or you can just dodge towards them to get in range and then use Glacius then Incendio. Another trick is if you're already next to an enemy you can use Accio on an enemy further away and then use Glacius into Incendio. There are actually so many combinations you can do with just four spells and there's no group of enemies in this game you won't be able to deal with. Having two red damage spells also helps with dealing with high HP targets like bosses and trolls. That's it for spells, let's move on to gear. To make this simple, I'm going to break it down into three sections. First section being finding the gear in the first place. Second section, upgrading the gear. And the third section is adding traits to the gear. So finding gear. Thankfully in this game, gear is super simple. We don't even have to worry about the name of the gear or finding individual gear sets. We just need to be looking out for the colour. We want a full orange armour set. We want all this armour or gear, I guess wizard armor, to be within like five levels of your character so it's still strong. That means you'll have to like churn through armor sets every so often. Oh, and if you're not aware, you can change the appearance of all gear. So you don't even have to worry about how the gear looks. You literally just need to be looking at the color and the level. So how do you find orange gear? Well, the first one is you just got to be lucky in fights. You go into dungeons or whatever, kill goblins, poachers, and they drop armor, open up chests, all that sort of thing. But the second and easier option is to actually go to the store in Hogsmeade. The store is called Gladrag's Wizardware and the merchant inside will sell you legendary gear, orange gear, for 500 gold pieces each. It normally doesn't have like all six different pieces of gear at the same time so what you've got to do is got to leave, pass some time and come back and you'll have some more gear. But when you come back it's still 500 G's, 500 big gold coins, right? Very difficult to afford, which is why we have to resort to poaching. As soon as we've got the loom, that also means we've got the grab sack, which means we can go into the forest and steal animals, kidnap them with our grab sack and take them back to the brood and peck in Hogsmeade, sell them to the merchant and get 120 gold coins for each animal we've kidnapped. Moving on to the second section, upgrading your gear. So to upgrade your gear, you just need to go to the loom in the room of requirement and click the upgrade button. You'll need materials you can get from Magical Beasts. And right from the moment you get the grab sack, you also have access to most of the Magical Beasts in the game if you just get on your broom and go searching. And you can actually look up online to where the locations of each of the Magical Beasts are. And you'll be able to upgrade all your gear to level two, which if it's all orange will increase your offense and defense massively. And finally, to get your gear to level 3, you'll need to wait until very far down the main questline to where you capture a phoenix and also a graphon, and this will allow you to upgrade to level 3. And the final section for gear is traits. You can put one trait on each piece of gear, 6 traits total, and we're just going to use the same trait 6 times over. The absolute perfect trait to find is Scorching 3, as it will make Incendio do obscene amounts of damage. But the difficulty of traits is actually finding them in the first place. So you might have to settle for any other damage red spell. So to reiterate, the absolute perfect build will be six scorching freeze. 
So actually finding these damage traits can be done by going to bandit camps. You can see them on the minimap as sort of tents. You go there, kill out the enemies, and then go to the chest. You can see the chest on the minimap. You go to this chest, you open it up, and it will give you a trait. The thing is though, it's completely random to what trait you'll get. So the best tactic here is to clean out as many of the easy bandit camps as you can. And you may just get lucky and get scorching three or two or something like that. But if you're not getting lucky, once you've collected, let's say, half of the damage traits, that means you've reduced the total amount of traits down to 50% that you can randomly get, which means you have a higher percentage chance when using a save game exploit to get the randomly generated trait. So this save game exploit is where you go up to a chest, you save the game, you open the chest, see what trait you get. If it's not the trait you want, you quit out, load up, open the chest again. But for this technique, the more traits you have, the better. Moving on to potions. In Hogwarts Legacy, all the best wizards are also part-time farmers. In the room of requirement, you'll want to have many potion tables set up and some potting tables to grow dittany leaves so that you can brew the Wiganweld potions, you know, the HP ones. I think it's pronounced Wiganweld, not really sure. And once you put two talent points into Wiggleworld potions, they'll heal you back up to full. And for some reason in this game, you don't instantly drop dead, your health goes to zero and it gives you a moment to use Wiganweld potions. So you're basically invincible if you always have potions on you. So I want to stress that, just always have 25 Wiggleworld potions. If you ever go back to Hogwarts, just stack them up again, get farming and doing some alchemy. That's not it for potions though. We're going to be using just one quick inventory slot. So you can put plants on there or you can put potions. We're going to go with a potion and the potion is going to be Maxima. This is actually such a ridiculous spell. It, it doubles your damage. So when you run into like a super hard fight, they like say a troll or a boss or just maybe like a bunch of enemies because there's been a cutscene, just chug a Maxima potion and halfway through the fight, if it's still not over, chug another one. Not only does it double your spell damage, it also, it also breaks through shield. So you don't have to worry about breaking spells with the correct color. What's great about this setup as well is that both potions are easy to um, get the ingredients for. So for Wigan World potions, just grow Dittany leaves and pick up Hawk Lump Juice from Mushrooms. For the Maxima potions, you just kill spiders, pick up the fangs, and you go to riverbeds and just grab Leech Juice. It's one of the easiest ingredients to find, I think. Moving on to talents. So for talent, we're going to want to get the mastery or upgrade for every single spell and potion we're already using. So I'm just going to put them all on the screen now. And then in the early game, you want to grab Swift to be able to dash around. It's, it's great for casting Incendio. You want to get basic cast mastery to reduce your cooldowns. And also you want spell knowledge 1 and 2 giving you extra pages to put your non-combat spells in. Later on, when you're level 16, you will want spell knowledge 3, Revelio mastery, for increased Revelio range, it's super useful. Evasion Absorption and Basic Cast Airborne Absorption to fill your Ancient Meter Bar faster. You should be able to get all these talents around level 21, but if you're not level 21, I'm just going to highlight for you the, the ones you should um, get first. That's it for talents. The last part of the build I'm going to cover is a small section, but it's challenges. There are two challenges you can complete to make this build better. The first one being the Merlin Trials. You complete these puzzles on the map and then after you complete a set amount each time, you get plus four gear slots, increasing the amount of gear you can carry at one time. After completing challenges, you have to go into the main menu, go down to challenges and then exploration, find the challenge you've completed, then click unlock to actually get the bonuses. And the second challenges you need to do are collecting traces from ancient magic hotspots. Doing this will increase your ancient magic meter bar. So I said that was the last section, but there's actually one more thing you can do, which is probably worse than dark magic. You can actually go into settings and combat difficulty and actually just put it onto story mode and you never have to worry about combat again. The combat will become very boring if you do this, so bear that in mind. That's it for the video. If you found it useful, give it a like, all that stuff. Probably wouldn't subscribe unless you like Elden Ring, because this is pretty much my last Hogwarts video. Thanks for watching. See you later.